Eddie, how are you? Yeah, we are going to start now, okay? ृतिमृति <coughs> कामदम मोक्षदम से ओंकाराय नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चित्वाय भावाय सर्वभावाचिदे अज्ञानतिरंधा ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मृत तस्म श्री गुरव नम तीर्थंकर जगत न जयवंत वर्त ओंकार नाद जिन नो जयवंत वर्त जिन ना समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्त ने तीर्थचार जग मयवंत वर्त नमो तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार शंकर नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने अहो उपकार जिन वर नो कुंद नो ध्वनि देव्य नो जीन कुंद ध्वनि आप्या अहो ते गुरु का नो अहो ते भगवती मात नो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे सीध ने वंदी कहो सुत केवल भाषित आसमय प्राभृत अरे हूँ एक सुद सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारु जरी परमाणु मात्र नथी अरे जम नेत्र ते मज ज्ञान नथि कारक नथी वेदक अरे जाने जकर मोदय निरजरा बंद ते मज मोक्ष ने ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम श्री शुद्धात्मा ने नम जय जिनेन्द्र सो टुडे इज फेब्रुआरी सेवेंटीन uh 2016 and we are doing the swadhyay on samesha stanza number 7 we'll continue our swadhyay uh prior to start of the swadhyay we'll just read that stanza so it will refresh our memory uh how it goes the stanza goes <coughs> first we'll read this uh kunkun swami's original writing of the stanza which is in ardha magdi so let's go there <clears throat> vyavaharenu vadissadi nanissa charita dansanam nanam navinanam charitam na sal dansanam jana go suddho the gujarati version <clears throat> चारित्र दर्शन ज्ञान पण व्यवहार कथन ज्ञानी ने चारित्र नहीं दर्शन नहीं नहीं ज्ञान ज्ञायक शुद्ध छो 
on this stanza, uh, we already talked last week, uh, first time, and we will be talking same thing again. So let me have the slides. So we start with that. We are done up to, yeah, up to here. So we are going to start from here. <coughs> Introduction to the stanza, how it went through, what is, what does it come that, 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 uh, that uh, um, Kun Kun Swami talks in the introduction section. So let's see, okay, I need to uh, share the screen. Hold it one second. Um, where is it? Okay, <clears throat> share the screen, share the screen, share. Okay. So, <clears throat> with attention to the eternal soul substance, right faith is generated. We talked this one at great detail in stanza number six. I, I had to have a very narrow aim. <clears throat> When can I give this narrow aim? Once I know where I am, I go to AAA today and I just tell them that I would like to have a map of USA. So they give the whole country's map. It is useless to me if I'm not going to act on it. I look at the whole map and I said, this is where I want to go. I want to go to Phoenix. If I'm in New York, I want to go to Phoenix, then I will find a practically straight line connecting those two cities that what are the way highways I can reach there. So now knowing the whole country, where is Phoenix, where is Nevada, where is New York, where is New Jersey, all the states where they are, how they are laid out. I know that part. Now I want to come to Phoenix. I just practically make a straight line through the highway and just say, this is what I would like to go. My, my aim is to reach from New York to Phoenix. So it said 3000 miles. And it, if I go 50 miles an hour every day and drive for about 12 hours a day, so it, it will take so much. I decide those things. Now, once I decide all those things, my aim is only one and one and one only to reach Phoenix. So first I knew I gathered all the information and then I put my aim. Similarly, what is soul? What is soul made up of? What are the soul's relationship with the outside alien objects and everything? I understand everything. I gathered all the information. This is the information gathering session that I have it. Once I know exactly what is this nature of the soul, now, what do I want to achieve? I want to have a peace. Peace is within. If I look within, I'll get the peace. So now I'm going to draw the attention to the eternal soul substance. And that one will be giving generation of the right faith, Samyak Darshan. This right faith includes faith, knowledge, and conduct, etc. All the purity of the soul, soul's attributes. Right faith is a, uh, it's a uh, faith attribute. Uh, knowledge has a right knowledge and conduct has a right conduct. Uh, this kind of modes will be generated within me and I'll be getting super senses bliss within me. <clears throat> now, when I say right faith, right knowledge, right conduct, these are three divisions produced these three divisions are produced and production of these three divisions in the sense the right faith, right knowledge, right conduct, they are engrossed into the soul substance as one unit. Just for the sake of 
explaining just for the sake of understanding we are dissecting them to make it this is right faith this is a column for right knowledge this is right conduct they are not like that they are intermingled with each other into the soul substance so when i make the divisions of these three things mainly of course there are infinite attributes we talk about three attributes which are important for us to know about it as we said before sugar also has infinite attributes and to differentiate between the sugar and salt i just taste the, the white powder and it's sweet so i just said this is sugar only sweetness attribute i accepted at that time in in spite of having infinite attributes in the sugar i just aim on the taste attribute of the sugar and the sweetness i picked it up similarly a soul as an infinite attribute for our discussion purpose only three attributes we are considering right faith right knowledge right conduct so now when these three attributes i uh, i describe in the division way this is a right knowledge right faith right conduct all those things i do in the division form then it gives inclination of attachment to me we'll be talking more about this one <clears throat> this is impurity Did by it uncle yes. right uncle yeah i if you're going to talk about that purple one, that's fine later. It's coming. But I didn't, I didn't understand that. We are coming. We are coming, okay. we are coming up. Thank you. Then I'll, I'll wait. Last okay. time, so this is coming up. Okay. So this stanza clarifies these types of statements. I think we have done this one. So now let me just go through a few of the slides. This one we have talked about it. We have gone up to 12, stand, uh, 12 slides. So we, are up, we have come up to here. Now, the Three divisions, right faith, right knowledge, right conduct. If I see them in division form, it produces inclination of attachment within me. It produces rag within me. How? How that is done? So let me jump to that slide right away and then we'll come back to this one because I know last time it was not, not getting clear. Okay, here we are. To understand that part, when we say to consider in, uh, right faith, right knowledge, right conduct in division form, in division form, this is right knowledge I'm talking, this is right faith I'm talking, this is right conduct. We are talking as if they are separate, but they are intermingled into the soul substance. So when they are in unity with the soul substance, and when I'm talking in the form of divisions, they produces inclination of attachment. How that is produced, that's what we are going to talk. So we are going a little bit backward, one step backward to understand this scenario. So for that thing, what happens? Inclination of attachment is rag. It is occurring within me, occurring within a soul substance. And whatever changes are occurring in the soul substance, soul substance is invisible. It's a formless. It is no actual form. If this is a pencil, I can see it's a pencil. If this is a pen, I can see it's a pen. But the inside of the soul, soul itself is invisible, cannot be perceived through my senses. And now I'm talking about it. So I cannot perceive, I cannot see the soul inside. So there are certain indicator through which I find it out what's a condition into the soul. For example, I have a thermometer in the house. I'm going out for jogging today. Well, I went on my iPhone, I took the weather out and it says 75 degree. 
So I wear appropriate clothing and go for jogging. If it shows 55, I will put different kind of clothes. If it shows 85, the so thermometer is simply uh, an indicator of what is happening into the atmosphere. Thermometer doesn't do anything except it's an indicator. Well, I think I may have a fever. I put the thermometer in my mouth and it shows 98.4. Oh, I don't have fever. Thermometer become the indicator. Same way the karma are the indicator of what is happening within myself inside. What is the soul's condition that is being gauged through the uh, uh, karma as a thermometer. So when I say rag, when I say inclusive of attachment, that means it's a diluting state. So how is the diluting state perceived? How can I com communicate to another person through a medium of karma? Karma are the medium through which I can tell what is happening within me. So Karma, so, so that's what we are going to talk. So deluding karma, deluding karma are the things which, real, real, which are concerned with the inclination of attachment inside the soul. So deluding karma, they are, now don't get confused with this slide. My, my, my aim is just to draw the attention that when I look at the vision of right faith, right knowledge, right conduct, means it gives inclination of attachment. How that is giving, the deluding karma shows that one. Deluding karmas are two types. Right belief deluding karma and right conduct deluding karma. And as I said, don't get bogged down to this one. We will have this one coming again and again in the future. This is just the point that what what point I want to drive at it that we are trying to prove that one. So deluding karma are basically two types: right belief deluding, right conduct deluding karma. Right belief deluding karma are three types. Right conduct deluding karma are twenty-five times. So total twenty-eight subdivisions of deluding karma. I can assure you, you will know it by heart pretty as, as the end of the class. What happens here? That in right belief deluding karma, there are three types. Wrong belief, right belief, and clouded right belief deluding karma. In right conduct deluding karma, there are 16 types of passions or toxic emotions and nine types of quasi-passions. Now, just simply to understand, um, that right deluding karma having three subdivisions, we put it on over here. If my, what is my right belief? What is my wrong belief right now? I have a wrong belief. What is my wrong belief? Body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. That kind of feeling, I have it since time infinite when I was the lowest form of life in Nigod. And then after one sense, two sense, three sense, four sense, five sense living being. And all those things, all throughout those successive lives that I went through, I have a wrong belief that body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. So now, if I want to have a right belief, then I have to take these things out in which body is mine. I am the soul. I am the soul. That's a right belief. So once I understand that I am the soul and I experience the soul, then this right belief deluding karma, they simply disappear. Okay. So here we are. And then, one second. What happened to this right here? Sorry. 
Okay, so right belief, then there is right conduct. Right conduct has a 16 plus 9 types. We'll just go through it quickly. 16 types of passions are infinite bondage producing, partial vow preventing producing, total vow preventing passions, perfect conduct preventing passions, quasi passions, laughter, etc., and sex inclusion, etc. So these are the things in which infinite bondage producing, partial vow preventing producing, total vow preventing, and perfect conduct preventing, they are having four subtypes, anger, deceit, ego, and greed. So, infinite bondage producing, anger, deceit, ego, and greed, partial vow preventing, anger, deceit, ego, and greed, total vow preventing, anger, deceit, ego, and greed, perfect conduct preventing, anger, deceit, ego, and greed, and they are quasi passions and they are laughter etc six types laughter indulgence dissatisfaction sorrow fear and disgust and sex inclination three types male female hermaphrodite so these are 28 subgroups of deluding karma again as i say don't get carried away don't get confused because right now this is not our topic right now we are trying to get the other topic clarified in our mind what happens when i get my soul's experience when i get a soul's experience this one need to come over here in a first spiritual developmental stage first the spiritual development stage which is called mithyatva which is called wrong belief so all these 28 types of a karma are present within me all this karma are present and they are associated with my soul that's the first spiritual development state I have a wrong faith and I have a wrong conduct. I have wrong faith that body is mine. I have wrong conduct because I do all the activities related to my body. I go for jogging to keep my health proper. I do I watch my diet so that my diabetes remains under control. All this activity I do, all this conduct I do are related to the body, which is not mine. But that's what I do, and that's the first spiritual developmental state. And all the deluded karma are present. Now, what happens? Then there is a fourth spiritual development stage comes in which right belief deluding karma are gone and infinite bondage producing anger, deceit, ego and greed are gone means what happens in this stage in this stage that and, and uh, by the way this guy and this guy total they are about 99 percent of the whole thing practically practically so once this these guys are gone i'm almost pure almost pure means my rag and wish my inclines of attachment and aversion are extremely minuscule now in the previous one previous one everything was present infinite bonded producing passions were present so i was doing inclines of attachment and aversion in an intense form but when I'm coming to this next slide, then this infinite bonded producing passions are gone. Means almost everything is gone from me. Means I have that much purity occurred within me. Now I have a right faith within me. I'm called enlightened soul. I'm called, I'm called a learned soul. I'm called Samkiti soul. I'm called Samyak Darshan soul. 
when these guys are gone. Remember what did I say? These are karma, which my internal purity, this reflected in the form of absence of this karma. So at this stage, in a fourth spiritual development stage, my influence of attachment and aversion are extremely minuscule. Okay, now I further go to the next stage. Fifth spiritual development stage, the additional partial vow producing passions are gone. Means when first set of first step was gone, that was almost 99% karma were gone. Whatever remaining were there, out of which these guys are also gone. And so my karma load becomes much feeble. It becomes weaker. And this is stage, it is a householder, householder with a right belief. So if I'm the how I am the right I have the right for right faith and I'm still a householder like Srimad Ji, Srimad Rajchandra Ji, he was he was a, he was a householder. Gurudev Sikhanji Swami, he was a householder. So they are called Shravak. Shravak means householder, and they have purity, that much purity occurred within them. So out of that 99 now almost much 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 more purity is there that's a fifth spiritual development stage we go further we go further and now you have three sets of four passions are gone infinite bonded producing partial vow preventing total vow preventing passions means anger deceit ego greed all those things are gone and that is called sixth and seventh spiritual development stage this is the stage of a monk who is engrossed within himself he is so close to removing the rest of the karma karma bondage and he's almost about to reach the dispassion state who is this monk he is a naked monk. He has only possession of his body. He has no other external possessions with him. That's from externally and internally. He had an absolute purity of the soul. He is engrossed within himself. And at this stage, the the passions remaining are perfect conduct preventing passions they are so feeble so feeble that muniraj the monk with his intense uh, personal effort will push that one out as soon as he does that he becomes omniscient lord he is that close that's a sixth and seventh spiritual development stage and so now your rag and dvesh, your increase of attachment and aversion are so feeble, so feeble as if they are non-existent. Remember when the first set was gone, 99% were gone, then these two, two guys are going away, further purity occurs. So it is, it is so feeble, so feeble that if you just put a line in the water, there is a line getting drawn in the front and on the back it gets erased out. Same way, these passions, uh, this, this karma are so feeble that he, he, we cannot see that monk is getting anger, deceit, ego and greed. We have no capacity to realize those kind of things at our stage, you know. But they are there. So you, you Increase of attachment and aversion is extremely feeble here. And then finally, he reaches the stage in which uh, he, he, he receives the 12th spiritual development stage and all the karma at the end disappears. And that is called dispassion state. Because remember, all the deluding karmas are gone and they are the root cause for producing 
in the inklings of attachment and aversion. They were the produce, producer of the rag and dress. They are totally gone. So soul on this side is totally having this passion state. He doesn't have attachment to somebody. He doesn't have aversion to somebody. He is no friend. He is no enemy. He is totally in equanimity state. And that is omniscient Lord. Now, what happens here? Your passion is, they have, passion means the toxic emotions. That is the reason that deluding karma were present. The toxic emotions are totally, totally, totally gone here. Until now, until this state, I had those e e toxic emotions in, in certain fashions. In, in when I was in the first stage, it was intense. Then second stage, it was uh, fourth stage, it was low. And then after sixth and seventh stage, it was almost practically none. And everything finally goes away. What we are talking about, my affection and aversion. At up to 12th Gunsthana or up to 13th Gunsthana, knowledge becomes pure. And now I have total absolute dispassion state. At this stage, at this stage, <coughs> excuse me, soul has a complete knowledge. Soul knows the whole universe. Every substance is of the universe. Their past and present and future modification. Omnis and Lords end up knowing in a given moment, a given summary. But he doesn't have any deluding karma at all, that he has no passions at all. He knows the whole thing. He knows the whole universe. He knows past, present, future of the whole universe. He knows who were his parents, who were his enemies, who were his friends. He knows all the things. But he has no emotions. He has no attachment. He has no aversion. He cannot produce rag and dwesh. He cannot have inclusive of attachment and aversion at this stage. In spite of him knowing everything, in spite of him knowing everything, he has no likes or dislike towards anybody or anything in the universe. What was happening before this stage? I had some, previous, let's go to, previously I had infinite bonded producing passions, means anger, deceit, ego, greed, or it is called inclusive of attachment and aversion, or it's called rag and dvesh. So in a first spiritual development stage, I had an intense rag and dvesh. Fourth stage, I had somewhat very, very minimal rag and dvesh. Fifth and sixth and seventh stage, the rag and dvesh are almost going away. And at thirteenth spiritual stage, Totally rag dvesh are gone, means there is no inclusion of attachment, no inclusion of aversion. So 13th spiritual development stage, omniscient Lord knows everything, but does not have any inclusion of attachment or aversion. When I'm in the first stage, where is that first stage? Let's bring that one. When I'm the first stage, I have all these toxic emotions present and I have intense form of rag and dvesh. I have intense form of, of uh, attachment and aversion. I have an intense form of inclusion of attachment and inclusion of aversion. When I say, one second here, 
Uh, oh, wait a second, where is that one? Okay, when I say that I have anger, deceit, ego, and greed, the four things can be in the form of toxic emotions or the anger, deceit, ego, greed can be divided into two forms inclination of attachment, inclination of aversion. For example, ego and greed, they are called dvesh, inclination of aversion. And anger and deceit are considered as inclination of aversion. So I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. Anger and deceit are considered as an inclination of aversion, means dvesh. Ego and greed are considered as inclination of attachment, means rag. So when I say rag dvesh, when I say anger, deceit, ego, greed, or I can say uh, 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 passions, or toxic emotions, they all means the same thing. Having known that one, so when I'm in the first spiritual development stage, if I know something, if I know something, if I end up knowing this pen, pencil, if I end up knowing this pen, I still has inclination of attachment present because these guys are already present within me. When I'm in the fourth spiritual development stage, I still has part of this uh, partial vow preventing anger, deceit, ego, greed. So I still have some form of inclusion of attachment and aversion. Fifth and sixth and seventh stage, I still have some form of anger, deceit, ego, and greed. However, minimal they are, but they are present. Only at 13th spiritual stage, only at 13th spiritual stage, when I have everything gone, everything gone, that means no matter how much I know it, I don't have influence of attachment and aversion because their base is gone totally. That's what we are trying to say in that first bullet that we started with. So I'll go to there. Any questions so far? Ask a question because this is kind of very important understanding in this stanza. Does it make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So then I'll go back to that uh, other uh, slide that we had it, and then now it will make much more meaning to us what it tries to say to us. You know, twelve, twelve, number twelve. Uh, We'll start from here and we will quickly go through. I know we had just gone this one before, but uh, so when right faith includes faith, knowledge, and conduct, these three divisions produce influence of attachment. Means when I look at my uh, but uh, uh, right faith attribute, right knowledge attribute, right conduct attribute, when I know, when I know, quote unquote, knowing, then I still have presence of those deluding karma within me. And that's why I have influence of attachment when I know these divisions. Now, does it make sense, this third bullet? These three divisions now, when I say three division, means this is knowledge. Means when I'm making this is a knowledge, that means uh, faith and conduct attributes are made secondary. This is a faith attribute, the knowledge and conduct are made secondary. To make primary and secondary, those kind of divisions are called uh, reflective thoughts and reflective thoughts along with the presence of those deluding karma 
produces inclusion of attachment. When I make divisions, means something is right, something is primary, something is secondary. I make primary secondary divisions. When I make primary secondary divisions, then it produces rag within me. It produces inclination of attachment within me because I also have presence of the deluding karma right now. If I am the omniscient Lord right now, if I have the purity of my soul substance completely and I had removed all my deluding karma and I have a total passionless state within me, then it doesn't make difference how many divisions I know it because I don't have inclination of attachment and aversion producing deluding state within me. And that's why I don't have that inclination of attachment occurring at that stage at 13th Gunsthanak. Till then, even the monk or the householder or the one with the enlightened soul or person like us who are in the wrong faith state. Each time we make two divisions, primary and secondary, means, yes, I know uh, uh, right faith is there, right knowledge is there, right conduct is there, but when I'm talking, when I'm thinking, I'm thinking one at a time, and so one is primary, others are secondary, Primary secondary divisions occurring within a transmigratory soul having presence of deluding state, that means he produces inclusion of attachment. This is an extremely important point. It has to be understood. If not, you can ask question. But again, this is the thing that we have to understand properly. Kiritanka? Yes. Can I ask, um, can I try and rephrase some yeah. of what you said? Okay. Um, the green box, um, if you're in the first through 12th Gunstana, yes. that means you have deluding karma. So therefore, that is why you still have rock. And if, if you are in 13th Gunstana or higher, then you are past the knowledge of the green box, you're at a higher state. That's why you don't have the deluding karma. Is that right? Because deluding karma are gone to start with. The because they're gone, they're not there, right? So, so, so there is nothing to produce inclusion of attachment. Is that what you're trying to say? Is because we are, in be we are below the 13 Kunstana, so we have things to produce the inclination of attachment. It's not a direct link, but it's the state that you're in that yeah. makes it so. Is that right? Yeah, it's not below 13. We are in first only. That's it. So, but, but wherever we are, we have hopes for higher. Yeah, yes, definitely. You are. All right. So from first to 12th, there is no way that we are without inclination attachment. You, are right. you made a point. That's a, that's a most important take home point right now, you know? Okay. So then I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions so far? Because, you know, this is the last time I knew that I was not making it uh, sense to everybody because that uh, deluding karma base was not discussed at the time, you know? Okay. Can we produce? For, we can go further. So uh, we, we finished that one. Now, meaning we have done, uh, we have done up to 12. So we'll just uh, uh, finish this one. Object of the object of the learned person is number one, not to have attention on division aspect of the attribute. Remember, when I make my my aim at the divisional aspect of the attribute this is knowledge this is faith this is conduct when i make the divisional aspect then i have the inclusion of attachment and aversion produced but divisions are known by him but does not show the respect to them Means I make them division way secondary in my understanding. Yes, you are there. 
but I'm not going to pay attention to individual right now because my aim is to look into my eternal true nature of the soul where there is not going to be any increase of attachment and aversion. Let me finish this bullet and I'll come back to that point. I have only respect to the indivisible eternal true nature of the self. Remember in the second bullet, what did I say? Divisions are known by him, but does not show the respect to them. Means what happens here? Again, the same slide we have to come back. Remember, when I'm going to have the it, 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 my, my aim is to the eternal soul substance which is indivisible in nature then purity is generated within me and when that purity is generated then these guys these guys are gone means this type of karma are gone this my, this type of uh, intense passions are gone from me intense toxic emotions are gone from me and when i pay attention to my eternal soul substance in the indivisible form then i have a partial purity occurs within me and in that partial purity the infinite bonding produ bondage producing anger deceit ego greed are gone means that much amount of rag and dwesh is gone from me remember now we are talking reverse that in the fourth spiritual development stage i have that much amount of at uh, that much amount of rag and dwesh are gone remember at this point i said even 99 percent of rag and dwesh are almost gone that means I have a purity occurred within me and this much amount of influence of attachment and aversion are no more present within me. Next step when I go, fifth spiritual stage, then that much amount of purity occurs within me, that much amount of influence of attachment and aversions are gone from me. In the sixth and seventh spiritual stage, that much amount of uh, 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 passion, uh, toxic emotions are gone so i don't have that much amount of uh, influence of attachment and aversion because i am now becoming purer and purer and purer by each succeeding stage and once i go to last stage then all the influence of attachment are gone influence of attachment and aversion are gone all the rag and dwesh are gone so on the first stage i have continued complete rag and dwesh occurring within me in the fourth stage i have 95 98 99 percent of the rag and dwesh were gone and their uh, fifth stage sixth and seventh stage and then coming to the last uh, 13th stage all my toxic emotions are totally gone so i have that much purity so according to my spiritual developmental stage i will have that much amount of rag and dwesh present but in a diminishing amount in the first spiritual stage it was intense rag and dwesh was present you can say, wait a second, I'm a religious person. I, I'm, I'm just doing all my regular routine thing. I get up in the morning, I pray to the God, I do the Swadhyay, I do reading, I do meditation, I go to temple, I do worship, I do uh, puja and everything, I give charity, I give donor. Where are my intense passion here? Well, they are the intense passion of auspicious type. I'm becoming angry. I'm very frustrated. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm playing the games with the people. I'm greedy within me. They are the inauspicious type of passions within me. So I have auspicious type of a toxic emotions present. 
inauspicious type of toxic emotion predator, but they are present within me with 100% force. When I'm on the fourth spiritual development stage, almost 99% of the passion producing uh, feelings are gone. So I still, I'm an enlightened soul. I'm a right faith person. I'm a Samyak Darshan person. I'm the self-realized person. I still have some passion, but they are very minuscule in nature. Then fifth spiritual development stage, sixth and seven, and coming up to the thirteen and a uh, thirteen spiritual stage, all the emotion producing things are totally gone within me. So those are the things we are talking about over here in these slides. Uh, number twelve. So, divisions are known by me, but I don't show respect to them because now I have put my aim to the eternal soul substance. And when I do that, I have the purity occurred within me. That means that much amount of influence of attachment and aversions are gone from me. And I have only respect toward my indivisible eternal true self. Remember, when I'm driving on the road, my aim is to drive properly. At the same time, I have to keep eye on the surrounding also, that, that everybody also, they are not approaching within my, my space and everything. So I have to know. So I have to, I have to know them, but I respect them. I don't have to pay attention to, too much to them. I have to pay attention to my own driving. So. I show the respect to my eternal true nature, even though I know that the divisions are there, but I don't show the respect to them. Having said that, now we start with the Tika, means a commentary by Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev, means uh, Amrit Chandra Acharya Dev, as I told you last time, if not, then I'll just repeat, that Amrit Chandra Acharya, he came after 1000 years of Kun Kun Swami. Kun Kun Swami came, after 500 years of uh, Nirvana of uh, Mahavi Swami. So beginning of the beginning of this uh, time cycle, beginning of this time in the first century, just, just prior to first century, Kun Kun Swami was there. In the 10th century, Amrit Chandracharya Dev was there. Between them, 1,000 years of dif difference. But what Amrit Chandracharya Dev, when he wrote this commentary, it appeared as if he entered into the heart of Kun Kun Swami. And he exactly knew what Kun Kun Swami was thinking. He exactly understood what Kun Kun Swami meant to give the uh, 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 meaning of the stanza. So he gave the comment and he expanded. Not only he expanded, but he expanded in Sanskrit. Sanskrit was a princely language at the time. In the sixth century onward, it became very princely language. And Amrit Chandracharya wrote commentary in Sanskrit language. Not only he wrote it, but if one reads the whole paragraph in Sanskrit, whole commentary in Sanskrit, almost all 415 stanzas that he wrote commentary on it, each commentary, each paragraph, he will have only one verb in the verb in the sent, whole sentence. I am eating, I am sleeping, I am driving. I, I only put three verbs in those three sentences. In the whole sentence, the whole paragraph, he will have only one verb. And as people say, people say in the sense, these are the historical fact that they say, you want to see the best of Sanskrit, you read Chandracharya's uh, commentary on Sanskrit on Samesa. It's extraordinary things. It's amazing thing what he has written. And 
those are the thing we are translating and we are discussing all these things and that's why it took so much time for us in the sixth stanza for close to four and a half to five months so now we are talking about Amrit Chandra Charade, what he tries to tell us he says soul is in inclusion of attachment state why because I am in the first spiritual development stage so I have the all the deluding karma present within me and that's why I have inclusion of attachment means I have toxic emotions present within me toxic emotions could be negative type or positive type positive means I really 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 want to give donation but I don't want to put my name on it I want to do the worship I go to temple I do my worshiping just with the pure heart and everything I do scriptural reading I get intense scriptural reading I do meditation I do self uh, self uh, 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 I, I do the uh, self analysis within me and everything so all those things are positive types of toxic emotions anger deceit ego greed are the negative types of toxic emotions and so they are present at this time Material karma are simply present as instrumental cause. Remember what I said in the beginning of the class that karma are a thermometer. They just show what is my condition inside. What is a soul's condition inside? How much intense toxic emotion soul has it? It will show in the form of all the deluding karma present. If my toxic when i get the self-realization i go to fourth spiritual development stage i experience myself i have self-experience i have enlightenment i have self-realization i have some darshan. at that time the karma on the outside they show yes that much lack of karma is present in this person so karma material karma are simply instrumental cause there is an erroneous thinking in which people say oh karma are bothering me that's why i don't understand everything you the swatya is going on in english and everything and it is so detailed and everything and so we get confused we get lost we have no intent no intention to learn all these things and everything because my knowledge of obscuring karma are preventing me to do anything Arribai, knowledge obstructing karma are the material karma material karma they are here and my lack of knowledge is within me they both are two separate things my knowledge obstructing karma are simply telling me that I have weakness of my no intense knowledge producing state within. So knowledge obscuring karma are simply instrumental, simply indicator, simply thermometer. I shouldn't blame to them. I should blame to myself inside. Okay. Then this state gives soul its impure state. What does give impure state to the soul? my increase of attachment state increase of attachment is within me rag is within me dvesh is within me anger deceit ego greed are within me and that gives me impure state now even one perceiving the indivisibility of attributes within the soul as divisional aspect divisional aspect now we are talking divisional aspect then also he is not able to achieve right faith because right faith gets generated only when one has total faith concentrated on indivisibility of the eternal soul substance if i'm looking less than in uh, 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 less than my aim of indivisible eternal true state of self 
Anything less than that will not give me right faith. It will give me impure state because it's going to give me rag and dvesh. It's going to give me influence of attachment and aversion. And as a result, I'll have a karma bondage and all kind of things. So I'll have a wrong cycle keeps on going. For right faith to be present, I want to have right faith. I want to have right faith. One has to have his undivided attention to the eternal, indivisible nature of the soul substance. This is my aim. This is where I has to I have to look at it. When I look at my indivisible, eternal, true nature of the self, giving me undivided attention, then and then only I'll get some darshan. If anybody says other way around, it's not the true statement. I know Amrit Sandhacharya Dev is giving very, very strong statement, but that's a fact. Only and only the way to obtain right faith, enlightenment, Samyak Darshan, self realization means to have undivided attention to the eternal, indivisible, true nature of the soul substance. Now, what we are doing, we are trying gathering all the information and we are trying to go to that path. That's what our, our aim is right now. Now, uh, oh, already time passed by, we just did only one slide. I'm sorry, I just, yeah, I'll quickly go, we'll, we'll try to start this slide and see what happens. Divisional aspect of right faith, knowledge and attribute is not subject of enlightenment. Subject of enlightenment is undivided, indivisible eternal soul substance and that's all my aim has to be all infinite attributes in the soul substance are present in the indivisible form right faith right knowledge right conduct and infinite other attributes are present in an undivided fashion into the soul substance and for example, sugar is white as well as sweet, but they both are having indivisibility with the sugar substance by itself. I can't take the whiteness out. I can't take sweetness out. Sweetness and white are the part and partial of the sugar as a substance. So faith knowledge and conduct attribute and other infinite attributes are part of me as a soul substance they cannot be separated out and so we'll continue this one next time i, I wanted to do a lot more but I, at, at least you know at least that uh, uh, deluding karma thing uh, if oh, i hope that it is clear to some uh, everybody and if not send the email or just talk last the next time also and we'll just go through again <coughs> excuse me <coughs> but these are the things that we have to avoid okay any questions so far if not then we can just do the closing ah. yeah let's upload this again so we can revise it Okay, I, I'll send it out to you, you know, right now. You know, as soon as uh, this is, uh, thing is done, done then uh, I'll upload, okay? Javani ke gyan se sujhe lo kalo Sovani mastakanamo sada deta ho dhaan Nine times namo ka mantra Namo rantana namo siddhana namo arana namo jam namo loe sao shanam Namo rantana namo siddhana namo arana namo jam namo loe sao shanam Jai Janendra. Jai Janendra.
Mechamindakam. Jai Chananda Kretanka. Jai Chananda Kretanka. Thank you. Bye. Bye.